In this problem, we're given a circuit diagram here, and we need to find the voltages V1 and V2. We're not told how to find the voltages, however, I'm going to use the mesh current method. I find it the easiest for this problem. You could probably use the node voltage method as well. Um, it, it doesn't really matter terribly, but this section is all about the mesh current method, so I'm going to say consistent with that. In the mesh current method, we know that we have to look at all of these individual parts. So this is an individual part, this next part's an individual part, this next part, and so is this next part. So we're going to have four different parts in here. When we have the mesh current uh, method, this is kind of like a variation of Kishkoff's voltage law, where we have the current going around our enclosed area like this. Uh, my current's going to go this way, and it can go either way. It could go opposite of this. Um, everything we would do would just be in reverse though. However, we should still get the same exact answer. I like to go um, from the bottom to the top, and this will be going in this direction. And I'm going to do the same thing for both of the right two parts. So this is what my circuit diagram is going to look like. I'm going to have an I1 right here, I'm going to have an I2 right here, an I3 right here, and then an I4 right here. We have four different currents, but actually we only have two different currents because we know that the 6 amps is equivalent to this I1. Because if we look at this part right here, it's, only, it's the only current flowing through here, and this 40 ohm resistor is in series with this 6 amps. So for this system, the I1 is 6 amps. And that's going to be the same thing for this I4. The only resistor in this part right here, in this closed circuit, is the 120 ohm resistor. It's in series. So we're just going to have that I4 is 1 amp. Now we just need to solve for I2 and I3. For I2, we're going to add up all the resistors because in this closed circuit, they're all in series again. So we're adding the 80 plus 40 ohm resistor, that's 120 plus the 8 ohm resistor. We're going to have 128 ohms of resistance. But this is for our I2. We have to, since it's next to our I1, calculate the resistance from our I1. And the 40 ohm resistor shares, like I said, with I2 and I1. So the I2 is going like this, but we know from our I1 current flow, it's going like this. They're in opposites, so our I1 is going to be a negative. We're going to have a minus 40 ohms, and this is being multiplied by the I1, the current flowing through I1. Well, we know this to be 6 amps, so we could just substitute this in for 6 amps, and when we move stuff around, we'll factor that part in. We know it's also next to our I3 also though, so we're going to have to subtract from our I3 because our I3 for the 80 ohm resistor is also going in, in a different direction. We know that for this circuit it's going this way, and this way it's going this way. So we're going to have an 80 ohms, and this is I3. All of this is going to be equal to zero per Kishkoff's voltage law. Now we are going to, actually to um, make things simpler, I'm going to also divide everything by eight. After we do that, we're going to get this as our equation right here. This is our first equation. Now we have to find our I2 or our I3, or something that looks like this that we can kind of manipulate and get our I2 or I3. So now we're going to look at this part right here. We're looking at our I3. The only thing in our I3 is our 80 ohm resistor and our 120 ohm resistor. So we're going to add these together. This is going to be 200 ohms for our I3. It's right next to our I2, so we're going to have to subtract from this our 80 ohm resistor. We'll do a minus 80. This is in ohms, and this is for I2. Now we also have to subtract from our I4 because our I4 is right next to it. Um, this is the same reason we know that the current for our I3 is going this way. Current for I4 is going this way. So they're an opposite. We have to subtract. I'll be minus here the 120 ohm resistor and our I4. This is going to be set equal to zero. Now we know that our I4 is one amp. We wrote that right here. So we can just plug this in here as one amp and do the same thing where we get the formula. After I do all of this, I am going to get this equation right here. Now we notice we only have two unknown variables. So we could plug this into a matrix or we can just solve this ourselves. I'm gonna solve it myself because it doesn't seem that much work. All that I'm going to do is take this bottom part and multiply everything by two. If we do that, we can add it to this equation right here. We're going to see that our I3s cancel out and that we're going to get a 12 I2 is equal to 36 amps. Again, I'm adding this part to this part right here. 
from this we're going to see that our I2 is equal to 3 amps. And this is the answer for our I2 right here. We have 3 amps. Now we should find our I3 because that's our other current that's unknown. To find this, all that I'm going to do is plug it back into one of the two equations. I'll just plug it into this equation since it seems simplest. I'll have 5I3 minus 2 times I2, which is 3 amps, is equal to 3 amps. So these two together is going to be a negative 6 amps. Then I'll add these together because, you know, they're on opposite sides, so you have to add. We'll have 9 amps, and this is 5I3 equal to 9 amps. That means our I3 is equal to 1.8 amps. And these are our two currents. Now to find the voltage. So we know the voltage is flowing through this closed system for our I2. It's flowing through this entire system, so it's going to be hitting our V1. However, we also know that our 6 ohm resistor is flowing through the circuit, and we can see that it covers the same area. So what we're going to have to do when we look for our voltage, well, first we're going to write out our voltage formula to be V is equal to our current, times resistance. And we're going to solve for V1 first. So we'll do V1 is equal to I times R. Well, we know our R, R1, to be 40 ohms. Now we need to find the current. Well, if we look at I1, this is 6 amps. Well, I2 is also touching it. However, it's going in the opposite um, direction, as we described right here. So we're going to have our I1 minus our I2. So 6 amps minus 3 amps. This is going to give us 3 amps. 3 amps times 40 ohms of resistance is going to give us 120 volts for our V1. Now we're going to move on for our V2. We know our R2 to be 120 ohms. We know that our I is um, I3 and it's next to I4. So when we look at this, I3 is in the direction of our voltage. So we're going to have a 1.8. I4 is in the opposite direction, which is 1 amp. So we're going to have a minus one, this is amps, so we're gonna get that this is 0 0.8. We'll have 0 0.8 times 120. That's going to give us 96. So the V2 is 96. And that is how you solve this problem.